Hello, everyone. I'm Tiffany Bryant Jackson, Education Manager at Three Bone Theater. And today I've got two cast members coming to share their stories and their experiences about our next show, Andy and the Orphans, which opens in just two weeks. So today we have Susan and Eddie, and I am going to allow you guys to give yourself a short, brief intro to our audiences because you both are making your stage debuts with Three Bone Theater, correct? Correct. All right. Well, start with just a little intro of who you are, how long you've been acting, and then I'm going to jump into a few questions. Okay. Who wants to go first? I'll let Susan go. I'll go first. Um, I'm Susan. Um, I have lived in Charlotte for 17 years um, and have been acting most of my life since I was, I think, eight years old was when I was in my first play. Um, I've lived all over the country. I've performed and directed and taught and musical directed and choreographed. Um, most recently, I ran the J Stage Community Theater Program for the last 15 years. And um, I have been watching Three Bone Theater since its inception and have always been really impressed and blown away by their work. Um, not only on stage, but especially in the community. And I'm just really grateful to be part of this project. Fantastic. Thank you. Welcome aboard. We appreciate you being a patron and then joining us on stage on the creative side as well. Eddie, tell us a little more about you. Well, my name is Eddie Barbanel. I just want to say thank you to Robin, Mitzi, and Three Point Theater for putting on this play of Andy and Orphans. I've been acting since I was um, four years old. Um, I acted off Broadway in New York, and I did the same play in Boca Raton in South Florida. Um, I advocate for people with intellectual disabilities. Um, I am a global ambassador for the Special Olympics, and 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 I met Barack Obama, who signed Rose's Law to eradicate the R word. So instead of using the R word, he changed it to intellectual disability instead. Fantastic. So I just want to piggyback on something you just said. You were in the original showing of this show in New York, correct? Correct. That's fantastic. How was that experience originating a role? the best experience of my life. Fantastic. Now in this show, you two play siblings. So I'm curious, um, sibling relationships run the gamut and how those dynamics work, no matter what, whether we are like-minded or we are different in our attitudes, our style, our aesthetics, whatever it is, sibling relationships are interesting. So I'm curious if either one of you have siblings, one, and two, how is your relationship with your siblings at this moment? Well, I have a brother in California. I love him very much. He's done it. He's done, he's done, he's done everything for me through acting and, um, and I greatly appreciate him. And, and I can't wait to see him soon when he comes up to Charlotte, North Carolina to see this wonderful, poignant play of Andy and the Orphans. And I just want the audience to know that um, we need to um, promote acceptance and inclusion and dignity and tolerance and have a positive interaction that we belong in the mainstream, the mainstream of life. We need a sense of belonging. And, and at Q&A sessions in New York when I acted, I tell everybody, never give up. Believe in yourself. Read for the stars. And this play is filled with many emotions, laughter, sadness, serious, poignant, and it gives an audience a new understanding of the abilities of those with special needs. We can achieve our dreams. We need acceptance and inclusion 
and we need positive interactions. To, You're to show absolutely people what, what, right. What, what, to, right, to show people what we can do, not what we can't do. And I will eliminate the word disability in my vocabulary. The word that we should be using is different ability. We are all different. We all, we all have abilities. And I am so happy and lucky that I am a Charlotte, North Carolina, being the brother of Susan, who plays my sister. I love her so much. And we have great interactions with, 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 with each other. We, we joke around each other. We laugh with each other. We do everything. And that's what we need now. The that's most important fantastic. thing right now, you're right. The, the, the most important thing right now is, is not about Jewishness. It means nothing to me. I know it's great to share the Jewish customs, the Jewish holidays, but right now it's not relevant right now. The focus is, is promoting this play for the audience to come and see this play to see what we can do. Do not ignore us. To, to put people first. Yes. Not to exclude people with special needs. Look at the person on the, in the inside, not the person on the outside. Which is exactly what we're aiming to do with this particular show and making sure um, we have a cast that is reflective of what is written in this show, um, which is why we have a character with Down syndrome being played by an actor with Down syndrome. And we know that is not always the case in arts. I'm gonna dig a little bit more into a few things that Eddie said, but first I wanna go to you, Susan, and talk about your family dynamics, your sibling dynamics, and how it relates to how you're working it in this show. Well, ironically, um, Tiffany, I am an only child. <laughs> Wow. So, um, I don't have any siblings, um, but I what I will say that I find really interesting, um, I mean, obviously I've been close with a lot of people who have siblings and I've been, um, you know, sort of the adopted family member in a lot of situations throughout my life. And I think it's just interesting exactly what Eddie is saying is reflected so much in the play and so much, I think, like you said, siblings have such a complicated relationship because they are what Maggie and Jake are doing in the play, which is everything is all about them. They really have trouble understanding or getting off of like their needs and satisfying what, what makes them uh, tick or feel good. And instead trying to get over to what Andy is and who Andy is and what Andy is all about. Um, and so that's been a really interesting thing to kind of take apart and explore as part of the play. And obviously the bonus is getting to work with Eddie and getting to be close with Eddie. And he calls me sis all the time, which of course I've never been called before. So that's been a real treat. Fantastic. I love it that you're someone coming in as an only child and coming into this family relationship. But you bring up a good point in um, the complications of the characters that are the brother and sister aren't abnormal, right? We are all kind of focused on ourselves as human. It's a human nature. And this show has to take us outside of that where we have to think past ourselves for our, our unit. Um, I myself am an older child, so my thought process is a little different because I am always thinking about my siblings. And I have to force myself to not sometimes because uh, I will make sure they're okay before like I am okay. So it's been interesting to read through this show and, and see it. Um, Eddie, you mentioned a little bit about the characters being Jewish. And I do think it's kind of important because it's not something we always see represented on stage or screen that isn't about the past lives of someone who is Jewish, right? We know about the past lives. We did that. Our, we did a show um, based on internment camps ourselves, but we're seeing current present day family who are Jewish, though one sibling is exploring some other things. 
Um, and we see how that plays out in the family that has different traditions and how it works. And I think that's kind of important for our audiences to see on stage too, because we live in a world, in a country specifically, that tends to try and center its focus on one religion. So um, Susan, I want to hear about you. Did you find that refreshing to jump into a show that gets to center that piece of a family that's not often centered in the most positive light? I mean, you touched on what is obvious, which is, you know, the rise of anti-Semitism specifically in, in the last several years is mind blowing. Um, I think many of us live in a little kind of microcosm where we don't necessarily see or experience that, um, but it is on the rise. And I think what you're saying is absolutely true, which is that any you know, marginalized community or people who are regularly discriminated against, um, it's it's really important to portray that and and educate people and and get it out there. I think Eddie's right in that it's not the pivotal piece of the play, um, but it is really interesting to me that it's just in there um, exactly what you say, like many groups of people are tired of only seeing themselves represented in some crisis, you know, a Holocaust play, um, something about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. And this is just, it, they happen to be Jewish, you know? So yes. it's it's woven in um, the into the writing. I find it, I find that really interesting. And I also find the intergenerational trauma um, as every family has, to be particularly interesting from a Jewish lens. I mean, I could talk about that for a long time, but um, it's, you know, it's it's there. And I think it exposes to people, it exposes people to something that they may not be um, aware of. And I think that's important. I think this play does a, right. Yes, I think this play does a good job showing the intersection of who people are, right? We're all many things. I am this, but I am also this, but I am also this. And all three things can be represented without having to highlight any of them because they just are. They just are a part of who I am. And I think that goes to your point, Eddie, when you talk about abilities, just because we have differing abilities doesn't take away. It's just a part of who you are in in life and in the show. Right. And um, God has taken something away from them in one area and made them extraordinary in other areas. And I actually agree with my sister. We need to stop anti-Semitism in this country right now. Every time I, I see things on TV, it makes me sad, it makes me cry. And, and I think that we should put an end to that right now. And I think I that do, doing a play like this I hope the audience will come see us act, interact with us, get to know us better. Yes. And have a sense of camaraderie. Like, we need to be in the mainstream, the mainstream of life. I, we, 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 we have to be in the mainstream of life. And um, I know Susan is right. I always call her sis. I love calling her sis. I bet you she loves it too. Um, it's a fantastic thing. And you bring up a good point. I think um, what I would like audiences to take away from this experience is seeing something that is outside their daily norm, but also thinking about how they interact in the world with others who are different from them in various ways, whether it is if I'm interacting with someone who has Down syndrome and not not treating them as an other, as just another person who happens to have. Treating someone who is Jewish, not as the Jewish person, but another person who happens to celebrate um, being who they are in their culture and heritage. And so I think this show does a really good job of giving us a lens. And to your point, Eddie, I think what makes things mainstream is people's exposure. The more people can see things that are different, the more they seek things that are different because there's a lot of things that people just don't know. So when we get them to experience it, 
Uh, then they go, oh, well, I'm going to take on more content related to this. There is a such thing and it exists. Um, Eddie, you speak a lot around the world because you're also an advocate um, in what you do. So tell us a little bit more. I know you work with the Special Olympics. You have experience with our community partners, Best Buddies, and you just like to impart your, your expertise all over the place. Tell us a little more about how you became an advocate. Well, I became an advocate when I went to Miami Dade High School. This kid Noah Gray was holding his artwork campaign and I made a speech about it. And because of me talking about the use of the R word, millions of people pledged and I use that word ever again in our language. And um, I've spoken to different countries. I've been to Athens, Greece, Morocco, Ames, Iowa, Boise, Idaho, Lincoln, Nebraska. I spoke with Tom Arnold, uh, Brooklyn Decker, all these um, celebrities. Um, I've been in uh, in many shows and movies, which I'm not going to mention because you know, the focus is about this play and in the orphans. And I hope that everyone comes to see and hear me do my monologue at the very end of the play. And, and, and my sister, she always hears my monologue. The line that I love to quote, my best part of the monologue is, I am a human being. We are all human beings. We yes. are all different in our own unique way. And I know that I want every one of you the audience to listen to this on the YouTube channel to make sure that you have all your friends bring this back to your community to teach people that that we we can succeed at whatever we try to do. The words my mother taught me and my mother has done a lot for me all these years. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't be here in in North Carolina. I am so lucky and blessed to be here, be a part of this wonderful cast. My sister and brother, mother and father. That We're is, happy to have you, Eddie. Right, and and that is what this play is about: sending yes. a positive message. And Robin, and Mitzi, and Free Bone Theater. I love I love them both. And um, I don't mean to ham everything up and take up much of your time, but I feel that this play, you're going to love this play. It I is think so, you're right. Right. We, this, is so, this is such a poignant play, and I hope that everyone will come down and see this play because we would love to see a packed house. Buy yeah. your tickets. Buy your tickets now. There you go. Eddie, Eddie is telling you, get your tickets now. And I will co-sign that you don't want to miss this show. Um, we heard from Eddie what he wants audiences to take away from this show and learn from this show. Susan, is there one thing that you're like, if you are coming to see the show, this is what I want you to take away from it. What do I want you um, to feel? Is there one thing you can pinpoint for now? You probably have a lot of things, but what would you want to say to an audience member? Well, when, when Eddie was talking and then, and also when you were talking, I was thinking about from the perspective of Maggie and, and Jake, who's the other brother, um, you know, Maggie and Jake serve an incredible purpose in the, play, and I think that the playwright does this brilliantly because specifically Maggie really has an issue with Kathy, who is Andy's caretaker. Um, she she just really looks down on her and she looks down on Andy. You know, she's very condescending and judgmental of pretty much everyone. And by the end of the play, she's doing exactly what we're talking about. She's she's exhibiting a little bit of um, understanding and compassion and empathy. Um, she's un She's somehow gone on this journey that, you know, not everybody has to be like you and people who are not like you make maybe make you uncomfortable um and that's when you dig in you know that's not when you run away 
that's and they're they're forced to do it you know she's trapped in the car she kind of doesn't really have a choice but she does have a choice and she really turns she and Jacob really turn around um, and they learn a lot and I guess that's what I would say about what I hope people walk away and think about who do they meet and interact with in their life that they immediately judge um, and the awareness of that um, whether it's a person with disabilities or whether it's a Jewish person or whether it's like Kathy just someone from Long Island um, you know who dresses differently and you know has a different kind of lifestyle it doesn't really matter who it is um, give the person a chance for who they are inside. I love that. Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Walk away judgment free if you can. And if you find yourself judging, ask yourself exactly what you're judging. I would like our audiences to come to this show, not only because it's fantastically acted, so thank you guys, but also because it is a conversation starter. It is a time to take a look at your surroundings and your environment and see how your behavior has influenced your sphere. What is your sphere of influence and how can you make a change? Um, and what does that look like in your world? I want to thank you both for spending some time with me this morning. I'm going to tell our audiences the show opens February 10th, runs through the 25th. You do not want to miss it. I have a feeling People are going to be clamoring for this show, so we want you to get your tickets now in advance to secure your seats in that space. This is going to be an excellent production, and we are only two weeks away, right. which, wow. That's right. Crazy. And, right, right, Tiffany. And I, 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 just, I just want to thank you for your moderation, your questions, and we answer them to the best of our ability. But I, I just want to say, before we sign off, um, to say to Danielle, you you are directing this place so great. She I, is. I, 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 right. I love the way that he directs his play. My mother and father in his play too. And um, I, I, I just want to say thank Lindsay Ferentino, the playwright, my best friend, who wrote this play for somebody with Down syndrome is Andy. I know that she is in... Um, uh, Germany by now. Lindsay, if you're watching or listening in, I love you. And even though you're not here, we will do this play um, in your spirit. And I hope that you will love this play. And I thank you, Tiffany, for what you've done for moderating this play and background. And I just want to say Please come see our show. See what, what we can do. And sis, I'll see you later tonight at rehearsal. Sure. I love Yes. That. And to our audiences, we will have an interview with the playwright coming up in a week or so. So stay tuned because we're going to dig into the show from another perspective. Again, thank you both for joining us today. We appreciate your time. Anyone out there in YouTube land, get your tickets February 10th through the 25th for this fantastic production of... Andy and the Orphans. We don't be want you to there. miss it. Right. Be there or be square. Yes, exactly what he said. Be there or be square. <laughs>